Hi guys, thanks for tuning in to today's video. Uh, if you've not seen any of QNAP UK's YouTube content before, then welcome to the channel and please do like and subscribe below the video. If you're one of our more regular viewers, then please don't panic. I'm not replacing Craig and he will be back on the next video, I'm sure. So I'm Tom, I look after the channel for QNAP UK and one of the points that's often raised with me as a little bit of a pain point with QNAP is how do you choose between the, the, the number of units that we have in our portfolio? Um, and that's definitely a problem, right? If you look at our four bay units, not including desktop, uh, sorry, not including DAS or rack units, then we've got nine different tower units to choose from there. So it's definitely a problem. And if you're, we do understand that if you're an SMB or a home user or a power user, that it's really important to you, whatever whatever you're buying, that you're buying the right kit that, that's right for your purpose. So um, hopefully to videos like today will help you make a more informed choice with QNAP. Um, and if it doesn't, if it doesn't answer the questions that you want, then please do reach out to our pre-sales team. So you can do that either by dropping us a comment um, below the video there, or reaching out to us on our dedicated YouTube email address, and that is youtube underscore uk at qnap.com. So today I've just picked out two of our four bay desktop range. On my left, we've got the TS431X3 and on my right, the TVS472XT, with the idea being that we can just compare and contrast the two units a little bit, have a look at their internal and physical specs, um, and then look at some ideal use cases for both units. So for those of you that aren't aware, QNAP's part number structure works in the way that the first number after the letters denotes how many bays that unit has, and then the numbers following that bay signifier, that, that denotes where it sits in our lineup. So the lower the number, the lower the spec, the higher number, the higher the spec. So if we look at the TS431X3 versus the TVS472XT, um, there's a gap between 31 and 72 there. And that gap is where the units like our 451 and 453 might sit, um, amongst others as well. So both units today um, fit in our SMB range, but you can see the 431X3 would be what we'd consider our entry level SMB, and the 472XT is about as high spec 4 bay unit as we do. So that gap in, in spec level is replicated out in the price difference. There's about a thousand pound cost difference between these two units at MSRP. The 431X3 is around 450 pound XFAT, whereas the 472XT sits at 1200, uh, sorry, 1300 pound XFAT. So if we start off by looking at the physical dimensions of the unit, um, you can see from a form factor point of view, they're pretty similar. We've got four forward facing drive bays on the front, um, but already we can see some differences, right? There's a, there's a clear difference in size between the smaller 431X3 and the larger 472XT. We're also missing the LCD display on the 431X3. It's not a huge difference, but it is, um, it is, a, it is a useful function to have, especially if you're managing multiple NAS units um, and you have some troubleshooting to do or something like that, the LCD display will give you an idea of what's going on with the unit, what it's up to, um, and any problems you might be having. Uh, they've both got an array of LED system lights that show which hard drives are populated, whether there's networks, what the network status is, whether they're powered on, etc. Uh, and both units have a USB on the front with our one-touch copy button. Both units have a few more USB ports on the back, and the 472XT comes with four more on the back, it's two type A and two type C, um, but they are both USB 3.2 Gen 2. And on the 431X3, uh, they are USB 3.2 Gen 1, and that's the same as both units have on the front of the uh, front of the boxes as well. After that, the 472XT really takes off by itself. You can see we've got two PCIe slots on the top of the on the top left of the unit there. One is pre-installed with a Thunderbolt NIC card, uh, and that gives you two Thunderbolt ports, Thunderbolt 3 ports they are. And then there's a blank PCIe slot as well. Now that, that really allows the unit to be upgraded or expanded in the future um, in, a, in a host of different ways. You could add an, a new J-Board, a new high-speed J-Board. You could add uh, our QM2 cards to put more SSDs in there. Uh, or you could use it just for a NIC card if you wanted some more network ports as well. Now, if we start to think about the internals of the unit, then the pattern that's been emerging really does continue. The uh, 431X3 is a really cost-effective unit with some decent components, but it doesn't match the spec level of the 472XT. 472XT comes with an Intel Core i3 processor, and that's a six-core processor, compared to an Anapura Labs chip in the 431X3. Now, again, that 
that, like I said, that's a really cost-effective processor and it's got some benefits. It's it's efficient on power and it's great at running um, encryption on the volumes as well. In terms of RAM, they both come with four gig of RAM, but the, the, the RAM in the 472 XT is upgradable all the way to 64 gig across two slots. So max of 32 gig per slot. Whereas the 431 X3 uh, maxes out at eight gig on its single RAM slot. The other key benefit we've got of the 472 XT is internally it actually has um, two slots for M.2 NVMe SSDs. Uh, and that starts to give us some inkling of what this unit might be used for because we can create two different tiers of storage there. We can have some really fast storage helping out the, the hard drives or SATA SSDs that you might have installed in the, in the hard drive base. Now this, along with the two Thunderbolt ports, gives us a really good idea of what sort of vertical this unit is going to end up in. And that's the media and entertainment world. Typically, the environment we, we quote this unit into would be a small post-production office um, that would have two editors. The unit can then sit on the desk between the two editors and they can directly connect to the unit over the Thunderbolt 3 ports. That gives them a really fast connection so they can either work collaboratively on files um, or work individually, but crucially it means that they don't have to transfer the files down to their workstations and back up each time they're moving reels and things like that. They can edit them on the NAS, it's going to be fast enough to do that. NAS can then be attached to the wider office network via the 10 gig pipe. And that's going to allow the editors to offload their finished projects into the office file share, where wider members of the team can then do what they need to do with those finished projects. They can upload them to the website or send them onto the clients as need be. And then what we're left with is a really fast NAS sat on the network for, for the whole team to use, whether that's for your daily backups or for file sharing between team members, whatever. You've got the benefits of a really fast NAS sat on the network, but you've also got your primary storage for your editors within the same box. The 431X3 is more likely to be used in a small to medium sized office environment, um, either as a decent spec NAS um, for a team of say five to 10 users, or as a dedicated backup target. Um, the fact that it's got that 10 gig SFP plus ports without the SS dedicated SSD base lends itself to really fast sequential data transfers, i.e. big backups. Um, with drive capacities that they are at the moment, um, in a RAID 5 environment, that box can easily provide over 50 terabytes of usable storage, um, which is again, it's a decent amount of storage in a very small cost-effective unit. The unit is really power efficient. Um, the, chip's, the chip's good on power and it's also got that smart functionality where it doesn't use too many of the processing overheads to run encryption, uh, which again lends itself as a backup target, be that a local backup or an offsite unit. And the unit supports container station and our snapshotting functionality as well. So it really is worth mentioning one last time that it's, it's, a, it's a really good value for money product at £455. Okay, so that's it. Thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed today's comparison of these two units. Um, it's something we're going we're gonna to look to do more videos like this if you, if you did enjoy it. So uh, please let us know in the comment box below. If you've got any more questions about either of these units or your environment and where they, what you should be looking to put in there, um, then like I said at the top of the video, please do use that comment box. We'll get back to you as soon as we can. Um, or email us on that dedicated YouTube video, a YouTube email address, which is uh, YouTube underscore UK at QNAP.com. Thanks guys and uh, see you all soon.